hidden passions that connect people. It was love at first sight. I remember that crisp fall day in Cambridge, Massachusetts, when as a sophomore at MIT, I first laid eyes on Maxwell's equations. <laughs> they were the most beautiful equations I had ever seen. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, only a nerd could possibly love equations. Well, I'll admit it. I am a nerd. But the beauty of Maxwell's equations lies in the way they couple the electric field E with the magnetic field B in this intimate dance of a space and time that gives birth to electromagnetic waves. These are the waves, radio waves, microwaves, light waves, that serve to connect us one to another. Now, ever since I started teaching engineering here at the University of Michigan, I have tried to communicate that passion to my students. Today, I'll tell you how I connected that passion with another love of mine to go on a journey of multidisciplinary creative exploration. I was teaching electromagnetics X230 in the year 2003. There was a student in the class, her name was Nanim Zainal, who came to my office hours one Friday, all upset. She had missed a quiz that I gave that morning. And she told me, her alarm didn't ring. Well, as a professor, I've heard many stories of the dog ate my homework just before the homework is due. So my initial reaction was, yeah, right. So I told her, come back on Monday. Now we'll discuss whether I will give you a, a makeup quiz. Well, that Sunday, as I was driving home along Plymouth Road, I came upon an accident. Later that night, I learned that Nanim Zainal and her friend, Ter Roslin, had been victims in that accident, struck down and killed by a passing truck as they crossed Plymouth Road. My heart broke, and I was filled with some guilt. I wondered whether Nanim had the missed quiz on her mind as she was crossing Plymouth Road and so didn't see the truck. Why couldn't I have been kinder that Friday and just said, of course, I'll give you a makeup quiz. So, the next day in class, we could not, of course, focus on Maxwell's equations, and we had no words for the tragedy that had just occurred. So my instinct then was to turn to another passion of mine, music. Now, music runs in my blood, through my DNA, through my grandfather, whom I never knew because he was dead before I was born, but we're connected across time, across the generations, by our passion and love for music. My grandfather was a composer in the then Gold Coast, now Ghana. So I decided that I was going to create, have a concert by students in the, this engineering class because many of them played instruments and they were passionate about music. As Victor Hugo said, music expresses emotions that we cannot say with words, but on which it's impossible to be silent. So we organized this concert called Electromagnetic Waves, and that brought the students together to share their emotions in a musical tribute to the two students who had passed away. Well, Dave Munson was the department chair at the time, and impressed by the musical talents of the students, asked me to organize a performance art event for the whole department the following year. So together with Catherine June, we organized an event called the Eeks Fall Bash, and that connected students and faculty 
where they display their passions for vocal performances, instrumental performances, Indian classical dance, and even magical acts. There's a faculty. A couple of years later, the, the North Campus deans had this idea for a course on campus that would allow students to explore creative expression in all its forms and across disciplines. So this was going to connect students in various disciplines. So my dean asked me if I would join with a team of faculty from art, music, and architecture, and I would be the engineer on board, to come up with a course. Well, we did so, and the course became UArts 250, the creative process. The challenge for me in putting together the engineering part of this course was how do you teach engineering concepts to a group of students who include musicians, artists, historians, econ economists, and even engineers? Well, after much reflection, I came up with a scheme which I call the KISS Play Make Steam approach. KISS Play Make Steam. Now, if you wonder what kinds of racy things go on in the classroom, <laughs> where you kiss, play, make steam, <laughs> the KISS stands for Keep It Simple, Sir. <laughs> the play, it's about the fact that play is too important a thing to be left to kids alone. Play is what stimulates the imagination, and play is essential for creativity. The make is obvious. We want students to be able to make things with their hands through a process of iteration, trial and error, to come up with tangible creations. And the STEAM connects science, technology, engineering, art, mathematics in one organic whole. So in the class, we start out with my colleague, John Nees, sharing his passion for origami, teaching the students paper engineering. Well, one student got so enamored with origami, he made about a thousand of these birds and did a fundraiser to help the victims of the tsunami in Japan. Now, I also then bring in my love for electromagnetics, start now with very simple motors, a homopolar motor based on a battery, a magnet, and a piece of wire. And you should see the joy in the students' faces as they get their motors to spin. <laughs> then I ask them to be even more creative and come up with something, a creation, using the homopolar motor and origami. And here's Erin Klager's solution. Let's see, let me okay. Okay, get a closer view of it, perhaps. Let's see. Well. Yeah. Now, how did you get this idea? Where did the idea come from? I was really, I was really inspired by the homopolar motor. Uh -huh. So I did a lot of research, and of all the different ways, I'm an expert on homopolar <laughs> motors now. So inspired by the homopolar motor. Next, we move on to somewhat more sophisticated things like Lego bricks. <laughs> and the students then are asked to create inventions using the, these Lego bricks and paper. And I'll show you a collaboration between a computer scientist and a music student. Composition number one. Oopsies. Composition number one. So they create a machine that reads the score using light sensors. And lastly, another project where a collaboration between an engineering student 
and some liberal arts students ended up creating a monster. Now, if that doesn't scare you. This is our monster thing? <laughs> yeah. So, if you go home and your parents say, we're not paying $40,000 a year for you to go to Michigan and play with Legos, that's what you can tell them. Tell them about the story of Shubham Banerjee, this 13-year-old boy in Silicon Valley, who recently made, out of Lego bricks and paper, a braille printer. Now he's attracted investor funding and started his own company called Brago. <laughs> so I, I started with a story of the concert Electromagnetic Waves. One of the performers in that concert was Michael Cho, who went on to become a big time executive in an investment firm. Michael has this passion for street singing. Still, and here he is on the street somewhere sharing his passion for music as an anonymous couple is enraptured by it. Now, Michael has inspired me to live one of my own dreams, which was to play in Power Center someday. <laughs> I see there's a piano here. So I'm going to try with shaking hands and all to try to connect by playing my own composition, Spirit Dreams. <laughs> 